Drought over the Pacific continues. The federal government has declared Los Angeles uninhabitable. The base is four square miles. Fall under NATO command. To be sure, Lieutenant, we're highly classified. You are going to be the first man on Titan. It's just an honor to have been selected, sir. I'm not going to let you down. Our resources have been depleted. In 10 years, half the world's population will have starved to death. Half the planet will be uninhabitable. But there is one place that gives us hope. The largest moon of Saturn. What if Titan could become our home? You will become enhanced humans. Most of you will fail. Some people will break during the training. You're talking forced evolution. I'm talking survival of the species. I've studied your work. I know what we're doing here. It's bigger than all of us. This is the last time some of us will get to drink for a while. I never thought I'd see something like this. <laughs> He's changing. I can't Rick? With Rick. Rick? This is a space research. It's criminal. They're becoming violent. I want to finish it. I can see everything. There is something alive inside of him. He's a soldier. There's no going back. I wouldn't have thought I would have got this far. How can you possibly know what he's becoming? If we can't control him, all of us are dead. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. What I'm looking at today is The Titan, a new sci-fi thriller that turned up on Netflix. And it's worth mentioning that many of the movies on Netflix often get a kind of bad rap. But to be fair, some of it's deserved. I mean, I understand that Adam Sandler is popular in other territories, in other places of the world. I get that. But nonetheless, his movies tend to be really bad. Bright is a mess. There was potential to be sure, but it was a mess. But at the same time, there are movies that Netflix does which are pretty good as well. So I'll read reviews of their movies, but I'll look at them myself, because sometimes what a critic sees as bad, as a viewer, I disagree with. And the same thing applies to the type. I've read reviews of it, and most of them were pretty scathing. Not at all good, and that's a bit unfair. It's a really clever movie, in the sense that most movies science fiction movies that is, the goal is to get man to another world and you build spaceships to do it. Either you invent technologies such as warp speed or putting man in suspended animation for a long period of time to reach a far, far off world. The Titan takes a different approach to this, namely it seeks to terraform man. So instead of emphasizing the sci-fi hard technology, as in equipment aspect of it, it deals more with the human aspect. What does it mean to be human? And if you change the outward look of the human, is it still human? As I said, this is a pretty clever movie that tackles some really interesting issues in a pretty, for the most part, well done manner. The movie takes place in 2048, and as far as the Earth is concerned, mankind has screwed the pooch. The planet is dying. There are more people than it can support. Cities are dying as well. So, as stewards of the world, we've kind of screwed up. So, the planet comes together to put people on other world, and it's discovered that Saturn's moon of Titan is most similar to Earth in its development and would be a good place for us to to be. Now the thing is, according to the movie at any rate, I haven't investigated this, but they say that Titan is like Earth earlier in Earth's development. So Titan doesn't support life as we know it. Therefore, as I mentioned, 
We have to change to adapt, to tighten. We have to change our breathing. Its atmosphere has more nitrogen in it than ours. This atmosphere does have nitrogen in it, but less than tight. So that has to be an adaption to be made. Our skin has to change. Our vision has to change. We have to become something other to live on tight and to build the human race in a new world. And the movie deals with the dynamics of this decision. It deals with the people involved. It's a very human story, which is interesting to watch because it could have very easily gotten caught up in machines and spaceships, and it doesn't do that. It's not to say that I, that I love technology, physical technology, devices, speculation on where devices will be, and so on. I dig that immensely. But it, every once in a while, it's good to see movies that take a different route to the same goal. So that really works for me. The Titan stars Sam Worthington. And as an actor, he's not a great one. And I don't mean to be me, but his repertoire is kind of limited. But the Titan does well with him because he's in most of the movie, to be sure. But the performance and this is from a non-actor, but his performance doesn't particularly seem very demanding. And that works for him, because whenever you ask a lot of Sam Worthington, you don't get much back. <laughs> so it's actually kind of cool that the role is not too out there. So, in any case, the people chosen for this process are, have to, are feeling effects of it. Some are dying, some are going insane, but, and this was known, actually. So, the Titan is a journey, if you will. They don't, which is interesting, because they don't actually go anywhere. It's a journey into what it means to be human, what it means, and what a human will do when they're faced, when they're looking into the face a potential extinction. It's a really good movie, worth watching, not bombastic sci-fi by any stretch, but a more contemplative sci-fi. It works. Check out The Titan on Netflix. You'll enjoy it. This is Brian from ScreenFiles.com and Review. Peace. Thank you.